Hello students, welcome to the lecture on concept of recruitment and after the lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Understand recruitment, the meaning and definition, discuss the process of recruitment, define recruitment policy, discuss factors affecting recruitment, understand sources of recruitment, define the methods of recruitment and discuss the philosophies of recruitment, understand selection procedure, discuss promotion, transfer, demotion. Let's start with a brief introduction to the concept of recruitment. Recruitment means search of the prospective employee to suit the job requirements as presented by job specification, a technique of job analysis. It is the first stage in selection which makes the vacancies known to a large number of people and the opportunities that the organization offers. In response to this, knowledge, potential, sources of recruitment. The various sources of recruitment are generally classified as internal source and external source. Internal sources. This refers to the recruitment from within the organization. External sources. They refer to the practice of getting suitable persons from outside. Let's discuss about the meaning and the definition of recruitment. Recruitment forms a step in the process which continues with selection and ceases with the placement of the candidate. It is the next step in the procurement function, the first being the manpower planning. According to Scott Clothier and Spiegel, the need for recruitment arises out of the following situations. Vacancies created due to expansion, diversification and growth of business, an increase in the competitive advantage of certain concerns, enabling them to get more of the available business than formerly, an increase in business arising from an upswing during the recovery period of a business cycle, vacancies created due to transfer, promotion, retirement, termination, permanent disability or death. The normal population growth which requires increased goods and services to meet the needs of the people, a rising standard of living which requires more of the same goods and services as well as the creation of news wants to be satisfied. What is recruitment? A famous author Edwin B. Flippo, he defined recruitment as Recruitment is the process of searching the candidates for employment and stimulating them to apply for jobs in the organization. So yes, recruitment is the process of searching candidates. Why we are searching candidates? We are searching candidates for employment so that we can offer them job. And we are searching candidates in such a way that more and more candidates should apply for jobs. Okay, so this process is called recruitment. Hope you have understand this. Next is importance of recruitment. Why recruitment is done? What's the importance of recruitment? We will see point wise. The first point is attract more candidates to apply in the organization. So the main importance is to attract more and more candidates. Why they are applying? We are, they are applying for the job in organization. So this is the importance of recruitment. Second importance, process which links employers with employees. So how both employers and employees are able to meet? They are able to meet through the process of recruitment. We are conducting recruitment in such a way that employer can meet various employees and he can select the best employee for him. Next importance is increase the pool of candidates for job at minimum cost. So here we are increasing the number of candidates which are applying for the job. We are increasing the number of candidates through the process of recruitment and this process we are doing in minimum cost. Okay. Next importance is determine present and future requirements of the organization with proper planning. So it is the importance of recruitment because recruitment through the process of recruitment we are able to determine that whatever the requirements how much employees will be required in future or how many employees required in present that is we are doing through proper planning in the recruitment process next importance is to provide good quality people to the organization we are doing recruitment for what purpose the purpose is to recruit good candidates to recruit knowledgeable and skillful candidates for our organization so that we can provide good quality people to our organization. Hope you have understand the importance of recruitment. Next we will see recruitment process. What is recruitment process and what are the steps in recruitment process we will see one by one. So first step is identifying job vacancy. First we have to identify how many vacancies for job in our company and in which department we are having that vacancy that we have to identify. Okay. Next step is prepare job description and job specification. So here 
we have already identified job vacancy then after that what we will do we will prepare a job description job description contains information like uh, job designation job location and what are the experience required for that job that all information will be included in job description and job specification includes the information like whatever skills required for this job whatever certification or whatever knowledge candidate should know or whatever experience in which field candidate should have that information is included in job specification okay next step is advertising the job vacancy so now as we have already identified job vacancy we have prepared job description job specification then after that we will advertise the job vacancy through newspaper or through media through uh, online we in websites whatever the process is we will advertise our job vacancy okay next step is managing the response as we have already advertised the job vacancy so many candidates will be applying for that job and this response we have to manage properly next step is shortlisting as candidates are applying for the job now we have to shortlist the required candidates for the job and after shortlisting we have to arrange interviews and after arranging interviews we have to conduct interview and after conducting interview we have to select the final candidates which are which will be selected for the final job okay through proper decision making so this is the process of recruitment hope you have understand this next i am going to explain you sources of recruitment what are the sources of recruitment there are two sources internal and external so we will see what are the sources included in internal source of recruitment and what are the sources included in external source of recruitment so first internal source is promotion through promotion we can do recruitment we can promote candidate from inside the company and we can offer him a good salary we can offer him a good designation and a proper increment and we will we will promote him so that he can also get some appraisal so through promotion we can do internal recruitment external source is advertisement advertisement because we are giving advertisements in newspapers in televisions or in websites so that we can recruit candidates from outside next internal source is transfers we can also hire candidates from transfer or we can also recruit candidates from transfer we can transfer the candidate from one location to another to fulfill the job vacancy next external source is campus recruitment this campus recruitment in campus recruitment various companies they visit colleges and they recruit candidates from colleges okay they offer them good package also so this is the external source of recruitment next internal source is upgrading we can also recruit uh, candidates from inside the company by upgrading upgrading means we are slightly we are giving them a small increment or we are upgrading their grade pay of salary and we are offering them a new job okay next external source is placement agencies many companies they contact placement agency for fulfilling their job vacancy the placement agency provide them a good candidate next internal source is demotion if the employee is not working properly in higher designation we can also demote that candidate to a lower designation and in this way this is our internal source of recruitment next external source is outsourcing and consultancy some big companies they have have they have totally outsourced their hr department and this outsourcing is done by consultancies means consultancies will perform their hr job the consultancy will recruit candidates on behalf of the, on behalf of the company and they will uh, work as a third party and they will supply candidates to the companies hope you have understand this external source of recruitment next internal source is retired employees many retired employees who are capable of doing work we can also offer them a job so this is a internal source of recruitment next external source is employment exchanges in employment exchange many candidates do registration mostly government having uh, employment exchange so most of the candidates they do registration in employment exchange so if the company is having vacancy the company can contact employment exchange for candidates so this is the external source 
Next internal source is retrenched employees. The employees who are working in past in our organization for one year, for two years, they have left for some reason. Now they want to come back to our organization, we can offer them job. So this is internal source of recruitment. Next external source is labor contractors. Many big industries, they want labors in large numbers, but they don't want to manage that labor. So they contact labor contractors. Labor contractors supply labors to them and their work will be done. So this is external source of recruitment. Next internal source is employee referrals. Many employees work, uh, working in the company, they have some references like their friends, family, relatives. So they can refer their family, friends and we can recruit them. Okay, so this is an internal source of recruitment. Next external source is unsolicited applicants. We have a data bank in our company, many unsolicited applicants. So we can consider that data bank and we can review that applicants, we can call them for interview and we can select them. So this is external source of recruitment. Next internal source is dependents and relatives of deceased employees. The employees who are not alive, whoever worked in our company, we can offer job to their dependents, we can offer job to their relatives. So this is again an internal source of recruitment of companies. External sources, online recruitment through websites by conducting walk-in interview. Many companies conduct walk-in interview. They display their job vacancy on their websites and employ and candidates contact through emails. They mail their resume and company conduct walk-in interviews. Candidates can directly give the interview in walk-ins and companies and they get selected also. So this is the external source of recruitment. Recruitment process passes through the following stages. Recruitment process begins with the personnel department receives requisitions for recruitment from any department of the organization. The personnel requisitions contain details about the position, locating and developing the sources of required number and the type of employees, identifying the prospective employees with required characteristics, and developing the techniques to attract the desired candidates. The goodwill of an organization in the market may be one technique, evaluating the effectiveness of recruitment process. Did you know that selection into organizations has as ancient a history as organizations themselves? Chinese civil servant exams established in 605 AD may be the first documented modern selection test and have influenced subsequent examination systems. According to FACULA, personal recruitment process involves five elements, the recruitment policy, recruitment organization, sources of recruitment, the methods of recruitment and the evaluation of recruitment program. Now let's move on to the next topic which is recruitment policy. Observe recruitment policy spells out the objectives of the recruitment and provides a framework for implementations of the recruitment programmer in the form of procedures. It may involve a commitment to broad principles such as filling vacancies with the best qualified individuals. Recruitment policy covers the following areas. To prescribe the degree of emphasis, inside the organization or outside the organization to provide the weight age that would be given to certain categories of people such as local population physically handicapped personnel personnel from scheduled caste or tribes and other backward classes to prescribe whether the recruitment would be centralized or decentralized at unit levels to specify the degree of flexibility with regards to age qualifications compensation structure and other service conditions to prescribe the personnel who would be involved in recruitment process and the role of human resource department in this regard. To specify the budget for meeting the expenditures incurred in completing the recruitment process. The prerequisites of a good recruitment policy. The recruitment policy of an organization must satisfy the following conditions. It should be in conformity with its general personnel policies. It should be flexible enough to meet the changing needs of an organization. It should be so designed as to ensure employment opportunities for its employees on a long-term basis so that the goals of the organization should be achievable and it should develop the potentialities of employees. It should match the qualities of employees with the requirements of the work for which they are employed and it should highlight the necessity of establishing job analysis. Factors affecting recruitment. The factors affecting recruitment can be classified as internal and external factors. The internal factors are wage and salary policies, the age composition of existing working force, promotion and retirement policies, turnover rates, 
the nature of operations involved the kind of personnel required, the level and the seasonality of operations in question, future expansion and reduction programmers, recruiting policy of the organization, human resource planning strategy of the organization, and the size of the organization and the number of employees employed, costs involved in recruiting employees, and finally growth and expansion plans of the organization. The external factors are supply and demand of specific skills in the labor market, organization's image perception of the job seekers about the organization, external cultural factors, obviously the culture may exert considerable check on recruitment, economic factors such as a tight or a loose labor market, the reputation of the enterprise in the community as a good pay master or otherwise, and such allied issues which determine the quality and the quantity of manpower submitting itself for recruitment. The sources of recruitment. Let's explore the sources of recruitment. Internal sources. It would be desirable to utilize the internal sources before going outside to attract the candidates. Effective utilization of internal sources necessitates an understanding of their skills and information regarding relationships of jobs. The merit of internal sources. The following are the merits of internal sources of recruitment. It creates a sense of security among employees when they are assured that they would be preferred in filling up vacancies. It improves the morale of employees for they are assured of the fact that they would be preferred over outsiders when vacancies occur. It promotes loyalty and commitment among the employees due to the sense of job security and the opportunities for advancement. The employer is in a better position to evaluate those presently employed than outside candidates. This is because the organization maintains a record of the progress, experience and the service of its employees. The time and the cost of training will be low because employees remain familiar with the organization and its policies, relations with trade unions remain good, labor turnover is reduced. It encourages self-development among the employees. It encourages good individuals who are ambitious. It encourages stability from continuity of employment. And it also acts as a training device for developing middle and top level managers. Demerits of internal sources. However, this system suffers from certain defects as there are possibilities that internal sources may dry up and it may be difficult to find the requisite personnel from within an organization. It often leads to inbreeding and discourages new blood from entering an organization. As promotion is based on seniority, the danger is that really capable hands may not be chosen. Since the learner does not know more than the lecturer, no innovations worth the name can be made. External Sources Ducento and Robbins remark, occasionally it may be necessary to bring in some new blood to broaden the present ideas, knowledge and enthusiasm. Thus, all organizations have to depend on external sources of recruitment. Among these sources are included employment agencies, educational and technical institutes, and casual labor or applicants at the gate, and nail applicants. Advantages of external recruitment. External sources of recruitment are suitable for the following reasons. It will help in bringing new ideas, better techniques, and improved methods of, to the organization. The cost of employees will be minimized because candidates selected in this method will be placed in the minimum pay scale. The existing employees will also broaden their personality. The entry of qualitative persons from outside will be in the interest of the organization in the long run. The suitable candidates with skill, talent, knowledge are available from external sources. The entry of new persons with varied expansion and talent will help in human resource mix. The disadvantages of external sources are orientation and training are required as the employees remain unfamiliar with the organization. It is more expensive and time consuming. Detailed screening is necessary as very little is known about the candidate. If new entrants fails to adjust himself to the working in the enterprise, it means yet more expenditure on looking for his replacement. Motivation, morale and loyalty of existing staff are affected. If higher level jobs are filled from external sources, it becomes a source of heart burning and demoralization among existing employees. The methods of recruitment. The methods of recruitment are different from the sources of recruitment. Sources are the locations where prospective employees are available. Direct methods. These include sending recruiters to educational and professional institutions, employees contacts with public and manned exhibits. One of the widely used direct methods is that of sending of recruiters to colleges and technical schools. Most college recruiting is done in cooperation with the placement office of a college. Indirect method. The most frequently used indirect method of recruitment is advertisement in, in newspapers, journals and on the radio and television. 
advertisement enables candidates to assess suitability. It is appropriate when the organization wants to reach out to a large target group scattered nationwide. Third party methods. The most frequently used third party methods are public and private employment agencies. Public employment exchanges have been largely concerned with factory workers and clerical jobs. They also provide help in recruiting professional employees. talk about the philosophies of recruitment. There are basically two philosophies of recruitment, traditional, realistic. The traditional philosophy is to get as many people as possible to apply for the job. As a result of this, a large number of job seekers apply for the job, which makes the final selection process difficult and can often result in the selection of wrong candidates. Wrong selection can, in turn, lead to employee dissatisfaction and turnover in the long run. In realistic philosophy, the needs of the organization are matched with the needs of the applicants, which enhance the effectiveness of the recruitment process. In realistic approach, the employees who are recruited will stay in the organization for a longer period of time and will perform at a higher level of effectiveness. Selection procedure. Selection is the process of picking up individuals out of the pool of job applicants with requisite qualifications and competence to fill jobs in the organization. The process or the steps in selection. Preliminary interview. The purpose of preliminary interviews is basically to eliminate unqualified applicants based on information supplied in application forms. Selection test. Job seekers who pass the preliminary interviews are called for tests. There are various types of tests conducted depending upon the jobs and the organization. Employment interview. The next step in selection is employment interview. Here interview is a formal and an in-depth conversation between the applicants is acceptability. Reference and background checks. Reference checks and background checks are conducted to verify the information that is provided by the candidate. Reference checks can be through formal letters, telephone, conversations. Selection decision. After obtaining all the information, the most critical step is the selection decision that is to be made. The final decision has to be made out of applicants who have passed preliminary interviews, test, final interviews and reference check. Physical examination. After the selection decision is made, the candidate is required to undergo a physical fitness test. Job offer. The next step in selection process is job offer to those applicants who have crossed all the hurdles. It is made by way of letter of appointment after that. Final selection or the definition of terms. Promotion. The permanent movement of a staff member from a position in one job class to a position in another job class of increased responsibility or complexity of duties and in a higher salary range. Transfer, the permanent lateral movement of a staff member from one position to another position in the same or another job class assigned to the same salary range. Demotion, the permanent movement of a staff member from one position in one job class to a position in another job class of decreased responsibility or complexity of duties and in a lower salary range. Pay rate adjustment upon promotion, transfer or demotion. Promotion. When a staff member is promoted to a position of increased responsibility or complexity of duties requiring a change of title and having a higher salary range, he or she will receive a salary adjustment either to the entry level of the salary range of the new position or to a salary rate which is at least 3.5% above the staff member's salary before promotion, whichever is the higher amount and provided that funds are available. Transfer. In order to discourage indiscriminate transfers, 
job hopping and unfair competition between departments, a staff member who transfers laterally to another position, having the same or a different title and the same salary range, is not eligible for a base salary increase. Demotion. Upon demotion or downward reclassification of a staff member's current position, a staff member's salary may remain unchanged if within the salary range of the new position or it may be adjusted to an appropriate level within the new salary range agreed upon by the department official concern, chair or director and the UTN director of human resources and subject to the approval of the appropriate vice chancellor or the chancellor. Promotion, transfer or demotion authority. The UND Director of Human Resources is responsible for ensuring that the system promotion, transfer or the demotion policy is uniformly and equitably administered. All promotions, transfers or demotions must have the prior approval of the UND Director of Human Resources or his or her designee prior to any commitment being made and prior to the effective date of the proposed change of status. Transfer Policy Transfers refers to the shifting of employees from one job to another within the same organization where salary, responsibility and category of the new job and the job are almost same. The reason or the objectives for the transfer. Transfer can be done on the request of the employee due to personal reasons like family problem or health problem. Due to HR policy which states that one employee can work in department or a place for a specific time period. Transfers are common in the organizations where the workload varies timely. If an employee is not able to do the work or job assigned effectively, he can be transferred to the other job where he can use his skills properly according to his interests and his abilities. Departmental vacancies can be filled with transfer of employees from overstaffed departments. Employees can be transferred to the position or the department with the higher priority workload. The types of transfer. Production transfer. When the transfers are being made for filling the position in such departments having lack of staff from the departments having surplus manpower, it is called production transfer. Remedial transfer. Remedial transfer refers to rectification of wrong selection or the placement of employees. If the employee can adjust himself in the given job, he can be transferred to the job where he can use his skills and abilities accordingly. Versatility transfer. Such transfers are done to increase the versatility in the employees so that he can work different kinds of jobs. This is done by transferring employee to different jobs closely related in the same department or the process line. This is used as a training device. Shift transfer. In many multi-shift jobs such as call centers, employees are transferred from one shift to another due to their personal reasons like health problems or evening college for higher studies or any family problems. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Recruitment is the process of searching for prospective employees and stimulating them to apply for jobs in the organization. Recruiting makes it possible to acquire the number and the types of people necessary to ensure the continued operation of the organization. The specialization of recruitment enables staff personnel to become highly skilled in recruitment techniques and the evaluation. The permanent lateral movement of a staff member from one position to another position in the same or another job class assigned to the same salary range. The permanent movement of a staff member from one position in one job class to a position in another job class of decreased responsibility or complexity of duties and in a lower salary range.